Hey everybody, welcome to Sunday Worship. I hope you guys all had an awesome Christmas and have been enjoying your break off from school and from work. Uh, I want to open up today's worship service with lyrics from a hymn by Martin Luther. It's called, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Um, I'm positive you guys have heard this uh, melody before, uh, if you've ever sat in, in a Korean service. Um, but Martin Luther wrote this hymn based on Psalm 46 in the year of his deepest depression. And he, he wrote this third stanza. And though this world with devils filled should threaten to undo us, we will not fear, for God has willed his truth to triumph through us. The prince of darkness grim, we tremble not for him. His rage we can endure, for lo, his doom is sure. One little word shall fell him. Amen. You know, as we start this new year, I want us to remember that God is with us. And not only is he with us, but he is for us. So with that in mind, let us pray. I will be reading a prayer from David Campbell's book, Heart Cries to Heaven. Our great and gracious God, as we come to the close of another year, we would indeed make it the prayer of our hearts that you would abide with us. We thank you that you have been with us through the days of this past year. Perhaps many a day we have not felt you near. Perhaps at times we have even felt that you have forsaken us and forgotten us. But we thank you that it has never been so. We thank you that you are constantly with your people and that you have enabled us to persevere in grace. You have comforted our hearts. You have heard our prayers. You have come so often to our aid. We pray that you will go with us into this new year. There is none of us who knows that what the new year will hold, but we thank you that every moment of that year is in your hands, and you will be with your people. We thank you that with the promise girding us, we can go forward with confidence and in your peace. We pray that you will help us to walk with you in this new year better than we have ever done before. Forgive us, Lord, for our sins and our backslidings of this past year. Grant to us, as the days of the new year unfold, an even closer walk with you. Help us to put sin to death. Help us gladly yield our lives unreservedly to Jesus Christ our Savior, and God, that we may regard ourselves entirely at his disposal to be, to go, to do, as he would wish. We pray that it may be our privilege to serve him, to bring glory to him, to help others to know him better, and to help some, indeed, to come to know him for the first time. Have mercy, we pray, upon those connected with us who come to the end of this year and their hearts are still closed against you, still hardening their hearts against you. Spare them, O God, we pray, spare them. Grant that this new year would mark the beginning of new life in Jesus Christ. We are so thankful for the Almighty Holy Spirit for his limitless power. To bring conviction of sin, to give new birth, and to draw those who are away from you to faith and to repentance. We pray, Lord, that you would do that in the hearts and lives of all who are upon our hearts. For Jesus' sake, amen. Today's scripture reading comes from Job 38, 1-3. Then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. He said, Who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. This is the word of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. There are only four more days left until the new year. And for some people, this is um, a time of, uh, you know, excitement and hope. But for a whole lot of other people, uh, anxiety is really high right now. Um, it, it's not a good time. It's, it's overwhelming because uh, it's just another month that they can't pay rent. Another month that they are having a hard time paying their bills. Um, and I know you guys are all very aware of the situation and of the challenges that this pandemic has brought to so many households. Um, people obviously have lost and spent this last Christmas and this past holiday season uh, without their loved ones. They have lost their family members, their friends, um, not just to COVID, but to cancer, to uh, suicide, to murder to other freak accidents. Um, and every day, you guys know our economy, you guys have been seeing and experiencing yourself how our economy is um, really getting pummeled day after day. 
you know, we see our some of our favorite restaurants are closing. Uh, businesses and shops that have been open for years have have had to close down. Their livelihoods are, you know, have been taken from them. Employment opportunities are gone, and as a result, unemployment is on the rise. Um, you know, it's been really especially hard for uh, low-income communities and communities of color. Um, and people right now are struggling to put food on their table. I know this is not the case for most of us, um, thankfully. I want to say for most of us, you know, we have been affected, but it has definitely not been, uh, we have not experienced the depth of damage that a lot of the people in the United States have experienced. Um, so I'm thankful to God for that. Uh, n nonetheless, nevertheless, <laughs> all of this loss, when you look back at 2020, all of the loss that we've been seeing, I can't help but be re be reminded of Job. As you guys know, Job lost everything in one day. And just to remind you and give you a, an idea of the depth of his suffering, I want to tell you everything that he went through, everything he lost in, in a little summary, okay? Job was a rich man. He lost 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 oxen, 500 donkeys. Not only that, but he lost all his servants, farmers, and hand workers um, who took care of his, his home and his livestock. He lost his seven sons and three daughters. He lost his home in one day. He was physically afflicted with painful sores. Um, the next day, he was scraping himself off with broken like uh, shards of glass or something. It was, it was that bad. Uh, his wife despised him and eventually left him. Uh, he, he was alienated from his whole community. The community that once revered and loved him turned their backs against him. He was loathed and forgotten by his own kinsmen, his own brothers and family members, acquaintances. All his bestest friends, his besties, they actually detested him. Even little kids, little boys, uh, scorned and ridiculed him. You know, he was a guy who <laughs> we we lost nothing compared to him if you think about it, right? Uh, and he wasn't going through a pandemic; it was just out of the blue, all of a sudden, in a matter of a day or two. In the in in the beginning, Job, as you know, he was a trooper. That's the whole reason why he went through all the stuff he went through is because he was right a righteous man. But he was a trooper that even when he was grieving and mourning the loss of everything in his life, his, his beloved children that he cared and prayed over all the time, his wife, his family, his friends, everything, even when he was mourning, there was nothing to praise God for, no blessing left. He didn't say, he didn't curse God. He's known to have he said, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. And that's where we get the song, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Right? You give and take away. You give and take away. That, that's where we get this song from. From Job. Job's wife wanted him to curse God and turn his back toward God. But Job doesn't. He stays faithful. But after a while... After some nights of misery, perhaps months of suffering, Job's confidence in God starts to waver a little bit. You know, and, and rightfully so. I mean, it's, it's only human to, to, do, to do that. But he starts questioning God. Doubts start arising. He wants, he's demanding God's uh, audience. He's demanding answers from the Lord. Why is this happening? How could God possibly be good when he allowed this to happen to Job, a righteous man? He was a good man. How can bad things happen to this good man? Um, how can bad things happen in this world and God still be good? You know, and that was really the question of uh, the book of Job. Um, and we may be thinking too, you know, as we come to the close of this devastating 2020 that has lasted nearly the whole year, 
we might have been strong with God, like, yes, we seek God, love God. Um, you know, he's still amazing. He's still faithful. But after each passing month, perhaps we started to get a little weary too. Perhaps our confidence in God started to waver a little bit too. Um, Job and his friends, they spend 35 chapters going back and forth, arguing with each other, trying to explain, trying to justify everything that happened to Job. You know, ultimately his friends were trying to uh, ex explain all of the things that happened to you, Job, is warranted. You must have sinned. They were trying to tell him, you deserve those things. You must have done something to get this punishment from God, to get this judgment from God. And, you know, all Job wanted this whole entire time was a word from God. His whole body, his whole being, mind, body, spirit ached for an audience with God. We don't know how long this book of Job lasted. I want to say it did last month because there are some verses that kind of allude to that. But regardless of how long he was suffering for, every waking moment, he was yearning for an audience with God. He demanded an answer from God. He, he asked God, God, come down here and, and answer this. What have I done to you? Why have you made me your target? Why have I become a burden to you? Why do you not pardon my offenses? Where are you, God? Why aren't you helping me? But all he got was silence. I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate to that sentiment too, uh, with with everything that's ha with everything that has been going on. Um, there's this park nearby uh, in Roslyn called Christopher Morley Park, and it's named after a very successful American writer. Um, and I don't know much about him, his faith, uh, or with the context of how he said this or when he said this, but he said, I had a million questions to ask God. But when I met him, they all fled my mind, and it didn't seem to matter. We have a million questions before God, but when we meet him, I'm sure it will all flee our mind too. And in the end, it's not really going to matter. And that's kind of the same boat Job was in as well. You know, he questioned God. He wanted to argue his case with God. But when God finally spoke out of the storm, Job was floored. Job was almost speechless. He went from giving chap, uh, you know, long lengths of speeches when he was talking to his friends to, to short, almost like that kind of speechlessness before God. The creator and the sustainer of all things was giving him attention. You know, Job, I don't think he was overwhelmed with, with just God's presence. I think he was overwhelmed because God wasn't judging him. After all, I mean, all his friends were saying, no, you deserve this. You deserve this. Uh, God is judging you. After all of that accusation, he realized, you know, God's not judging me. God loves me. This God, and God gives him this, uh, this almost interrogation, this barrage of 77 questions, and Job can't answer any of them. And he realized this creator, this, this God, this, this sustainer of all things heard my cry, cares for me is here for me and was always there in the silence. And he says, I've uttered what I do not understand. Things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. And that was his confession after God revealed himself to Job. God told Job, brace yourself like a man. Brace yourself. And other translation, translations say, pull yourself together. Dress for action like a man. Gird up your loins like a man. Because he was going to give Job a glimpse into the mysteries of God. You know, the context back in those days when they say gird up your loins, 
Um, and I really like, I know it's not, uh, you know, up to date uh, with our um, kind of language or our customs, but I like that term, gird up your loins, because uh, it, it reminds me to get ready, get ready for battle, get ready for hard work. In the context of what it was written back in those days, you guys know that uh, men and women, they wore long robes. Um, they were flowy robes and tunics. And when they had to work or when they had to fight in battle, they would gird up their loins. They'd pull up their long skirts, pull it toward the back, and, the, and uh, they would tie it like shorts. So their skirts would become shorts. Very, you know, in today's, that's very fashion, you know, forward. But, you know, when they girded up their loins, it meant that they were ready for hard work. It meant they were ready for combat. Um, and as unmanly as that may look or seem in today's context, it was a sign of someone manning up. It was a sign of them getting ready to do some hard work, get ready for action, pulling themselves together. And as we approach this new year, uh, we also need to put on that mindset of girding up our loins. We need to pull ourselves together. We need to ready ourselves to receive that revelation of God, because he's, he so wants to reveal his mysteries to us. I know some of you have uh, questions for God, um, and, and sometimes they seem unanswered. You know, you're still waiting for that revelation of God. Uh, you're still waiting for him to reveal um, himself to you. And maybe you feel like his silence um, is because maybe some sin in your life. As like Job's friends tried to convince Job of, I'm not good enough. I'm too sinful. I'm too dirty. And that's why I don't hear God. That's why he doesn't talk to me. Uh, maybe you're just so sick and tired of lamenting, of mourning this pandemic. Um, or just even dissatisfied with where you are at in life right now. Maybe you just want to give up altogether. But brothers and sisters, I urge you to gird up your loins. Get ready, because God does show up. You know, he may not answer the questions the way that we want, um, but I think the message version, and you guys know how much I love it. Uh, I actually think I'm going to read the uh, message version of the Bible in, this, in the new year, because uh, I, I think it's so fun. But I think it says it the, one of the best ways. Um, God tells Job, why do you confuse the issue? Why do you talk without knowing what you're talking about? And I love that. Why do you confuse the issue? Uh, when we have doubts, I mean, it's natural. When we have, we will have doubts in our, in our suffering. Uh, we will grumble at God too um, when we go through tough times. And a lot of times it's because of our ignorance. It's because we just do not know. Um... But God is so patient. The Lord is so patient. Even when we run our mouth, and even though he could just spike us, uh, he doesn't. He, he's gentle. He's kind. Uh, he's loving and long-suffering for us. God showed up for Job, and he answered him. And it wasn't with an explanation. It, it wasn't with, you know an answer that we we are trying we are expecting but god answered job with the revelation of himself he showed job who he was uh, god didn't have to justify himself he didn't have to explain oh one day uh, one day satan just came up to me and was like oh i'm gonna test job i want to do this and this to job he didn't have to do any of that job actually still probably had no idea um he didn't tell Job, his plans or his intentions, oh, this is what I wanted, this is, I believed it. He doesn't do any of that. He literally gave Job himself, and that was enough for him. That was enough for Job. I pray that we would have Job's endurance, his perseverance as we enter into the new year. We may be tired, we may be unmotivated even, uh, we may be angry with the Lord, but God, 
brothers and sisters, gird up your loins. Or as 1 Peter 1.13 says, uh, we need to prepare our minds for action. Prepare our minds for action. And being sober-minded, set our hope fully on the grace that will be brought to us at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So don't let your mind get clouded with your circumstances. Don't let your mind be clouded with bad counsel and think, you know, that's it. This is, this is my fate. That's the end. Because Jesus has a different plan. Um, you know, we just celebrated Christmas. And I, I know that we can get lost in all the presents and just the busyness of the holidays of meeting with fa family and friends and cooking and, and all those things. But God, I hope that we were reminded of Jesus, of how he gave up his throne for a manger, how he traded a crown for a cross, how he laid down his life for everyone in this world who is broken and lost, who's feeling as Job felt. You know, we may not see the answers, you know, for all the misery that we experience. But the Hebrew writer said, but we do see Jesus. I love that. He says, but we do see Jesus. And he's now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death. So that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. He was susceptible to everything we are susceptible to, including our suffering. So he gets us. He understands. And he's able to help us. Jesus sees us, and we now see Jesus victorious over the enemy. Jesus has the last word on everything and on everyone. That Of that, we can be sure. No matter what God permits to happen to us, He always has the last word. He always writes that final chapter in our lives. And because He's righteous, we can trust that he is always right and that he, whatever he does is right. So we could trust him. We could put our fears aside because he's a good God. He really is. Uh, Job finally understood that. I think he was overwhelmed with, uh, he was overwhelmed that a God who really owes us nothing, that every day we have, every thing that we have, every blessing that we have, is really out of his mercy and his grace. He owes us nothing, but this God speaks to us. This God, day after day, shows us his sheer mercy and grace. Uh, I think back to Job's confession in the middle of his suffering when he told his, fr his friends, I know my Redeemer lives. And that in the end, he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet my in my flesh, I will see God. And I love this part. I myself will see him with my own eyes. I and not another. How my heart yearns within me. It, it's really amazing to see how that actually does get answered in the end. And after Job realized hey, God is for me. And he's been with me this whole time. He's heard everything I've said. That's all I need. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done complaining. I'm done talking back. You got me, God. My, uh, my ears have heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. And I want that to be my confession in 2021. Yeah, I, my ears have heard of you, God. I've, I've heard all about you. I've heard how you worked in other people's lives. But now my eyes have seen you, God. I have had a personal encounter with you. I have received a revelation from you. I have seen you, Lord. That is what I desire for myself and, and for you in 2021. Let's have that faith, that perseverance, that yearning that Job had. And if you don't have it, pray for it. You know, as counterintuitive as it is, Paul said faith comes through hearing the word of God. And the message is heard through the word about Jesus. So listen to the word of God. Read and meditate and chew on scripture. Uh, sing it. Immerse yourself 
in his light and not in dark counsel. Because um, God will speak in the storm. God will speak out of the storm, brothers and sisters. Be ready. Gird up your loins. Uh, let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for uh, meeting us where we're at. Forgive us for the times that we've grumbled against you and turned our backs to you so easily uh, when things didn't go our way. Father, as we enter into 2021, help us not to wallow in our stress, um, but help us to, Lord, gird up our loins for action. We want to yearn for you and see you as our brother Job did. Holy Spirit, would you help us in our weakness? Would you give us the power to pull ourselves together and be sober-minded in this time? Remind us of the hope that we have through Jesus and that you have the final word in our lives. Lord, we want to see you. So give us a renewed love for your word and reveal yourself through the scriptures. And we pray all this in your son's precious name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Announcements this week are, um, please remember to continue praying for our sick friends and family members. Um, also, starting next week, very exciting because I don't think we've ever done this before, but the entire church, KM, EM, and even Sunday School, uh, will be starting a series where we all are learning from the same scripture. We're all hearing uh, and get, receiving the same message. Um, and I think you know, it's going to be really beneficial for us because right now we're all kind of doing our own thing. Cam has their service. We're doing our thing. Sunday school has their own thing. We don't get to see each other. Our paths never really cross. Um, but when we hear the same message, I think it's going to be very powerful. It's going to unite us in spirit. Um, and, you know, for some of you guys who have parents who go to the church, you know, you guys will be hearing the same thing. And uh, hopefully that'll maybe spark spark some conversations um, and uh, dialogue within your family members, which is going to be great. Um, so I'm so excited for that. Also, we will not be having our Thursday Zoom meeting this week because it is New Year's Eve, but I am planning to do uh, something a little bit different in the new year. Uh, we will still be meeting once a week, um, but I want to start um, a study on uh, our catechisms. Um, this is a, a catechisms are a classic way of um, just grounding the community. It's really meant for a congregation. It's meant for a body of believers. Um, and it's meant for uh, us to really be grounded in the word and to know what we believe in. It's really our statement of faith. And it's going to help form the words that we need. Like if people ask us what we believe, it's going to help us uh, to be able to answer. Um, so when we study it, it's going to be in a question and answer format. Um, I think it's going to be really fun. We're going to be studying from the New City Catechism devotional. And I'll link that for you uh, in the group chat if you guys want to buy your own copy. Um, also, we just need to find a date and a time, a day and a time. Um, in the week that really fits everyone's schedule the best. So I'll be sending out a poll in the group chat too, so that you could let us know when, when is a good day and a good time for you. And we'll try to make it so that, you know, it's, it's ideal for everybody. And I really hope you guys join this because it's going to be so important for our faith. And it's going to be uh, really, I think, awesome for our, our group to, to learn together. Um, and that's really it. So thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful new year. Um, and let's go forth uh, praying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. and Forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.